you know, given that there has been very little success over the past 30 years developing yeah. effective uh, pharmaceuticals to treat Alzheimer's, I've got to ask you, Dr. Dale Bredesen, <laughs> is Lakembi any different? Not really. So, you know, it's been called a breakthrough. It is a business breakthrough. It's not a medical breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, here's the idea. It's, it's, it's actually kind of a, a, this is a 1990s idea that took until the 2020s to, to develop. So the idea back in the 1990s was, aha, amyloid, this stuff that you make in your brain, which actually comes from a larger molecule, it's a little piece of a molecule that's cut out. This stuff must be causing Alzheimer's disease and therefore let it, let's rip it out of there. Let's just, you know, pull it out. And that was a pretty good idea 30 years ago. What has turned out though is that your brain makes this stuff normally when you have exposure to insults. So mm. if you are exposed to an infection, for example, herpes simplex from your lip, which can actually get back into your brain, unfortunately. Uh, P. gingivalis, which is a bacterium in your mouth from your oral microbiome, which also can get back into your brain. And any of a number of other chronic infections, toxins, things like various metals. What your brain does is, as part of the immune response, it secretes this stuff and it's amazing stuff actually it's a little bit like um like when you have a bug in amber i'm sure you've seen this you've got the mm. amber sequestering the insect this stuff is kind of like amber it sequesters mm. these things and in fact it is an antimicrobial peptide so it kills the microbes and sequesters them and this was shown by uh, Professor Rudy Tanzi and Robert Moyer several years ago from Harvard. And so it's a very interesting stuff. And it is your brain's response to these various insults. So when you take it out, it's a little bit like if you got, uh, if you got leprosy, your body also responds to the leprosy organism by making granulomas, another kind of response. And it's like saying, we're gonna give you a drug that sucks out the granulomas. Well, that doesn't do anything for what's actually causing the problem. And that's mm. exactly what's happened here. So here's the, here's the follow-up. Here's what actually has been translated into human results. Number one, this drug does not make anybody better. Number two, it doesn't keep you the same. Number three, what it does is, instead of going downhill like this, you go downhill 27% slower. So there is a minimal effect to slow the decline. And in doing that, number one, there's side effect, brain bleeding. Side effect number two, brain swelling. Side effect number three, three people during the trial died. Uh, and, you know, the, the argument from the pathologist is, yes, this looks like this is related. Um, so the problem is that simply sucking out of your brain, your brain's normal response to these various insults was a good idea 30 years ago, but it has not turned out to be a good idea for the long run. Now, let's compare what actually in trials has done better than Lakemi, as you mentioned, it's all over. Yeah, because the budget is huge. They're going to make hundreds mm -hmm. of millions or billions, hundreds of billions of dollars selling mm -hmm. this drug. So no surprise, you're going to hear lots of positive things from the PR team. However, let's look at what actually did better than this drug when it was given to people. Number one, ketones. Just giving the brain ketones, and this was done by Professor Stephen Kinane from Canada, has actually gotten better. People actually improved. The second thing, extra virgin olive oil alone has done better than this drug in terms of actually making people better, at least for a period of time. Number three, something which is called combined metabolic activators. So basically it's saying this is a, this is a situation where there is low energy in the brain. This actually gets at the problem much more than just ripping out the stuff that your body is responding normally with. Um, and then of course, as you mentioned earlier, recode. So we developed uh, years ago and first published in 2014, 
the RECODE protocol, which is reversal of cognitive decline. And this is based on 30 years of research that we did in the laboratory. And the idea here is don't treat something that's a complex chronic illness without asking what caused it. I mean, duh, mm -hmm. right? It's a pretty obvious thing to do. So, uh, you know, let's liken the brain to, for example, to a country. If your country is having all sorts of insults and it's now, uh, you know, it's now fighting on this front and fighting on that front, you, you know, you, you may go into a recession. You, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're putting your resources into fighting. What you want to do to stop that problem is you want to determine what's actually invading you. And then want, you would just want to get rid of those things. And then you want to reset to a period of building and strength. And by the way, there's a direct analogy here to what happened to our country during the pandemic. So yeah. early 2020, as you'll remember, we were all told what? Shelter in place, socially distance, don't go to work, you know, pull back. And what happened? We went into a recession. Okay, now you know we're kind of starting to come out of this, and people are getting out there again and doing you know they're building and things are improving once again. Well, your brain does the same thing. So when you are exposed to infections, to toxins, to insulin resistance, to leaky gut, to chronic sinusitis, to poor oral microbiome, to sleep apnea, on and on and on, these various insults. Your brain says, okay, I've got to go from a mode of building and maintenance to a mode of protection and downsizing, just like what happened in mm. the pandemic. And that's what the amyloid, that's what Alzheimer's is all about. Alzheimer's, as we discovered in the lab, is fundamentally a network insufficiency. So you've got yeah. supply, you've got demand, and when you have too much demand because of inflammation, uh, things like that. You get too little supply because of poor blood flow or poor oxygenation or low ketone level, things like that. Then you're going to have to go into this protective downsizing mode. So what we want to do is not to rip out the amyloid. We want to determine what caused it. Why is it there? And then we want to get rid of those things. Now, the interesting thing to me is, this drug may turn out in the long run to be a good idea at micro doses after you've taken mm. care, you know, after you've now gotten rid of all the invaders. I would love to now use very small doses and slowly help move out. And by the way, you can also do that with things like curcumin. You can slowly remove this amyloid. So there's, mm. a, there's a way to do it at the right time in the right place without all these problems, brain bleeding, et cetera. And one of the things this stuff does is actually to patch damage to blood vessels. So you can imagine ripping this stuff out. It's like ripping off a, a patch on your tire. Um, it, it's not gonna go well. So it's, it's again, it's, it's a misguided approach to treating this disease. And the reality is this is, Alzheimer's is now optional. Virtually nobody mm -hmm. needs to get this if you simply get on active prevention or earliest treatment. So we recommend everybody 40 years of age or older, please get a cognoscopy, just like, uh, you know, we all get colonoscopies when we turn 50. Mm -hmm. And actually my, my wife and I got his and hers <laughs> colonoscopies on Valentine's Day just to get it over with. And that's, so that's you very get, romantic, <laughs> very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> just get it out of the way, you know, so you don't have to worry yeah. about it. And so you, everyone should get a cognoscopy okay. if they're 40 or older. And that's some basic things, some blood tests that your doctor's probably not going to do. Make sure you get those. It's a, a simple, free online cognitive assessment it's called CQ, which you can get online right now and get a free CQ test and see where you stand. And then it's, if you've got symptoms, you also want to include an MRI.